Rome was wild with joy. Julius Caesar, having conquered his great rival Pompey, has returned in triumph the ruler of the world. Caesar. Speak. Caesar is turned to here. Beware the eyes of March. What says that to me now? Speak once again. Beware the eyes of March. <laughs> he is a dreamer. Let us leave him. Pass. Brutus, I have not from your eyes that gentleness and show of love as I was wont to have. Poor Brutus, with himself at war, forgets the shows of love to other men. And what means this shouting? I do fear that people choose Caesar for their king. I do fear it. Then must I think you would not have it so? I would not, Cassius. And yet I love him well. My man, he doth bestride the narrow world like a colossus, and we petty men walk under his huge legs and peep about to find ourselves dishonorable graves. What should be in that Caesar? Why should that name be sounded more than yours? Caesar is returning. Antonius? Caesar? Let me have men about me that are fat. Sleek-headed men and such as Lebanites. Yon Cassius has a lean and hungry look. He thinks too much. Such men are dangerous. Fear him not, Caesar. He's not dangerous. He's a noble Roman and well-given. Would you were fatter. Casca, tell us what hath chanced today that Caesar looks so sad. Why, there was a crown offered him. He put it by, but to my thinking he would fain have had it. Who offered him the crown? Mark Antony. What was the second vice for? Why, for that too, then he put it by again. But to my thinking, he was very loath to lay his fingers off it. As he refused it, the rabbleman hooted, and uttered such a deal of stinking breath that it had almost choked Caesar, for he fell down at it. Tis very like he hath the falling sickness. No, Caesar hath it not. But you and I and honest Casca, we have the falling sickness. I know not what you mean by that. Farewell, both. Tomorrow, if you please to speak with me, come home to me, and I will wait for you. I will do so. Till then, think of the world. Well, Brutus, thou art noble, and yet I see thy honorable metal may be wrought. For who so firm that cannot be seduced? Those that have known the earth so full of faults. They say the senators tomorrow mean to establish Caesar as a king. I know where I will wear this dagger then. Cassius from bondage will deliver Cassius. So will I. Stand close, my own. Tis sinner. He is a friend. Oh, Cassius, if you could but win the noble Brutus to our party. But sinner, take this paper and throw this in at his window. Three parts of him is ours already. And the man entire upon the next encounter yields him ours. It must be by his death. And for my part, I know no personal cause to spurn at him but for the general. He would be crowned. How that might change his nature. Crown him. That. And then I grant him but a sting in him. Therefore, think of him as a serpent's egg and kill him in the shell. The taper burneth in your closet, sir. Searching the window for a flint, I found this paper. It is not tomorrow by the Ides of March. Sir, March is wasted fifteen days. Go to the gate. Somebody knocks. Brutus, thou sleepst. Awake and see thyself. Speak. Strike. Redress between the acting of a dreadful thing and the first motion. All the interim is like a phantasma or a hideous
hideous dream. Good morrow, Brutus. Know I these men that come along with you? Yes, every man of them. Give me your hands all over, one by one. Shall no man else be touched but only Caesar? Decius well urged. I think it is not meet Mark Antony, so well beloved of Caesar, should outlive Caesar. Our course will seem too bloody to cut the head off and then hack the limbs. Let's be sacrificers, but not butchers, Cassius. And for Mark Antony, think not of him. Yet I fear him. Let him not die. But it is doubtful yet whether Caesar will come forth today or no, for he is superstitious grown of late. Never fear that. I can oversway him, and I will bring him to the capital. It is time to part. Brutus, my lord. Wherefore rise you now? Dear my lord, make me acquainted with your cause of grief. Portia, I am not well in health, and that is all. No, my Brutus. You have some sick offence within your mind, and upon my knees I charm you, by all your vows of love, that you unfold to me why you are heavy, and what men tonight have had resort to you. Kneel not, gentle Portia. I should not need if you were gentle, Brutus. Dwell I but in the suburbs of your good pleasure? If it be no more, Portia is Brutus' harlot, not his wife. You are my true and honourable wife. And by and by thy bosom shall partake the secrets of my heart. What mean you, Caesar? You shall not stir out of your house today. Caesar shall forth. I never stood on ceremonies, yet now they fright me. There is one within recounts most horrid sights. These predictions are to the world in general, as to Caesar. When beggars die, there are no comets seen. The heavens themselves blaze forth the death of princes. Cards die many times before their deaths. The valiant never taste of death but once. Alas, my lord, your wisdom is consumed in confidence. Call it my fear that keeps you in the house and not your own. For thy humor, I will stay at home. <gasps> Caesar, all hail. Perseus, you are come in very happy time to bear my greetings to the senators and tell them that I will not come today. Most mighty Caesar, let me know some cause. The cause is in my will. I will not come. That is enough to satisfy the Senate. But because I love you, I will let you know. Calpurnia here, my wife, stays me at home. She dreamt tonight she saw my statue, which, like a fountain with an hundred spouts, did run pure blood. And many lusty Romans came smiling and did bathe their hands in it. This dream is all misinterpreted. It signifies that from you, great Rome, shall suck reviving blood. Ah, and this way have you well expounded it. And know it now. The Senate have concluded to give this day a crown to mighty Caesar. If you shall send them word you will not come, their minds may change. How foolish do your fears seem now, Calpurnia? I will go. The Ides of March are come. I, Caesar, but not God. I wish your enterprise today may thrive. I fear our purpose is discovered. Brutus, what shall be done? Cassius, be constant. Papilius Lena speaks not of our purposes, for look, he smiles, and Caesar doth not change. Casca, you are the first that rears your hand. Most high, most mighty, O oh, Caesar. Pardon, Caesar. Caesar, pardon. I kiss thy hand, but not in flattery, Caesar. What, Brutus? Great Caesar. Hence, wilt thou lift up Olympus? Speak hands for me. Adieu, <laughs> Brute. Then fall, Caesar. Liberty. Free.
freedom. Tyranny is dead. Liberty, freedom. Why not? Stand still! Ambition's debt is paid! Then walk we forth, even to the marketplace. Let's all cry, peace, freedom, and liberty! Where is Mark Antony? Welcome, Mark Antony. Oh, mighty Caesar, dost thou lie so low? I know not, gentlemen, what you intend. Who else must be let blood if I myself? There is no hour so fit as Caesar's death hour. Oh, Antony, beg not your death of us. Your voice shall be as strong as any man's in the disposing of new dignities. We will deliver you the cause why I, that did love Caesar when I struck him, have thus proceeded. I doubt not of your wisdom. And am, moreover, suitor that I may produce his body to the marketplace, and in the pulpit, as becomes a friend, speak in the order of his funeral. I will myself into the pulpit first, and show the reason of our Caesar's death. I know not what may fall, I like it not. Caesar loved me, I weep for him. As he was valiant, I honor him. But as he was ambitious, I slew him. I have the same dagger for myself when it shall please my country to need my death. Bring him with triumph home and to his house. Give him a statue. Let him be Caesar. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is oft interred with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. He was my friend, faithful and just to me. But Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. When that the poor have cried, Caesar hath wept. Ambition shall be made of sterner stuff. Yet Brutus says he was ambitious. You all did see I thrice presented him a kingly crown, which he did thrice refuse. Was this ambition? Methinks there is much reason in his saying. Caesar has had great wrong. Yet Brutus says he was ambitious. I fear there will a worse come in his place. And Brutus is an honorable man. There is not a nobler man in Rome than Antony. If you have tears, Prepare to shed them now. Look, in this place ran Cassius' dagger through. See what a rent the envious Casca. Oh, piteous spectre. Oh, noble Caesar. Through this, the well-beloved Brutus stabbed. This was the most unkindest cut of all. Oh, we will be avenged. it work. Mischief, thou art afoot. Take thou what course thou wilt. The conspirators fled from the fury of the people. Anyone against whom there was the smallest suspicion was ruthlessly put to death by order of Mark Antony and young Octavius, Caesar's nephew and heir to his name. Brutus and Cassius fled into Asia, where they raised armies to march against Antony and Octavius. But all was not well between the friends. Brutus accused Cassius of taking bribes. I, an itching palm! When Caesar lived, he durst not thus have moved me. You durst not so have tempted him. Remember March, the Ides of March, remember? 
Did not great Julius bleed for justice sake? Do not presume too much upon my love. I may do that I shall be sorry for. You have done that you should be sorry for. You love me not. Oh, Cassius. I am sick of many griefs. Portia is dead. How was that killing when I crossed you so? For what sickness? Impatient of my absence and grief that young Octavius with Mark Antony have made themselves so strong. With this she fell distracted and swallowed fire. Portia, art thou gone? No more, I pray you. I have here received letters that young Octavius and Mark Antony come down upon us with a mighty power. What do you think of marching to Philippi presently? I do not think it good. Our cause is ripe. The enemy increaseth every day. We at the height are ready to decline. There is a tide in the affairs of men which, taken at the flood, leads on to fortune. Then, with your will, go on. Wheel along ourselves and meet them at Philippi. Philippi, the armies of Octavius and Mark Antony await the coming battle. Octavius, lead your battle softly on upon the left hand of the even field. Upon the right hand, I. Keep thou the left. Why do you cross me? I do not cross you, but I will do so. This is my birthday, as this very day was Cassius born. Against my will am I compelled to set upon one battle all our liberties. Now, most noble Brutus, if we lose this battle, are you contented to be led in triumph through the streets of Rome? No, Cassius, no. But this same day must end that work the Ides of March begun, and whether we shall meet again, I know not. Forever and forever, farewell, Cassius. If we do meet again, why, we shall smile. If not, why, then this parting was well made. Forever and forever, farewell, Brutus. If we do meet again, we'll smile indeed. If not, it is true, this parting was well made. All day long the battle raged. At last, the sun went down at Philippi. Antony and Octavius were victorious. Fly further off, my lord. Mark Antony is in your tents. This day I breathed first. And where I did begin, there shall I end. Time is come round. Caesar, thou art revenged. Even with the sword that killed thee. Julius Caesar, thou art mighty yet. The last of all the Romans, fare thee well. Friends, I owe more tears to this dead man than you shall see me pay. I shall find time, Cassius. I shall find time. Our enemies have beat us to the pit. It is more worthy to leap in ourselves than tarry till they push us. I know my hour. Is come. Caesar, now be still. I killed not thee with half so good a will. How died thy master Strata? Brutus only overcame himself, and no man else hath honor by his death. This was the noblest Roman of them all. 
all the conspirators, save only he, did that they did in envy of great Caesar.